The Airbus A380neo and Boeing 7478 represent two different perspective and realised wide-body aircraft, with similar ambitions to try and redefine long-haul flying. However, their outcomes would be very different, sharing some similarities, however, throughout the journey that I'd love to take a look at. The A380neo acted as a conceptual upgrade to the A380-800 and was heavily pushed by Emirates in the late 2010s to respond to challenges with the original A380-800 in efficiencies. Meanwhile, the 7478 actually launched and was Boeing's final iteration of the iconic 747 series. The variant was designed to modernize the Dash 400 with advancements that would compete with the A380-800. While both aircraft aimed to redefine their market segments, despite only one launching, neither gained widespread attention and acceptance as well in an industry that was dramatically changing. The 7478 firstly, well, it aimed to leverage the legacy that was created through previous iterations to offer increased capacity and better efficiency through improved fuel burn and other endeavours that had been adopted. Released in two versions, the 7478 saw its passenger variant aim to serve as an important replacement option for airlines looking to offload their ageing 747-400s. However, a focus was also on combating sales to the upcoming A380-800 at the time, which was also emerging. Despite the seeming advantages of adopting such a plane, the 7478 did really struggle to compete against twin-engined aircraft, which at the end of the day just offered far greater flexibility, and for most operators, came with the far reduced risks of taking on said plane. Ultimately, just three airlines would commit to the 7478 in a passenger capacity, with Korean, Lufthansa and Air China purchasing this variant, while the Dash 8F would see wider adoption. Its success certainly wasn't as high as maybe would have been imagined, and certainly it can be considered the saving grace for the program now looking back with hindsight. Had an A380neo, however, been developed, well, it would have built on the foundation seen with the A380-800, focusing on a Addressing the original model's shortcomings, while arguably playing just some of the role in the older variant's struggles as well. Emirates, the largest operator of the Dash 800 base model, was the only customer that proposed such a variant. That's right, it wasn't Airbus's proposals for this plane, it was Emirates. They believed that implementing next generation engines would improve fuel efficiency alongside other design tweaks. These upgrades could have therefore made the A380 Neo a more viable long haul option for high capacity routes, and at least for them, help replace existing A380-800s. Again, this is what Emirates believed, not with the manufacturer's backing that was needed to produce said plane. The limited appeal of the A380neo and 7478 highlights a trend that has primarily plagued the industry regarding quad-engine jets. That trend has seen airlines gradually shift from ultra-large aircraft that would once dominate the industry to more modest alternatives. By the late 2010s, the market had undoubtedly evolved, with airlines focusing on point-to-point -point networks over the traditional hub-and-spoke model. While several airlines still rely on this hub-and-spoke model, they realise it can be done in a more efficient manner now. Twin-engine planes like your 777, A350 and even 787 have emerged as preferred choices for long-haul flying because yes, they come with better efficiency but less risk and the flexibility to operate in various markets rather than just across one. To really succeed, quad-engine jets require specific market conditions with high passenger demand between mega-hubs. From the offing, this is therefore a market that can be tough to crack into and can put a lot of pressure on the airline in question that is taking the said plane on because if that market doesn't keep up with the high levels of demand they are experiencing at the time of the adoption for such a plane like the A380 or 747, it can have some pretty traumatic effects later on in terms of their finances and lead to the said airline trying to offload the plane as soon as possible. For most airlines, the aircraft required to succeed in these markets are already too expensive However, worse still, they're just going to struggle to find a dedicated route that will actually see them reap the rewards of having such a plane. While Emirates remains committed to the A380 program, even its extensive love for the aircraft could not, could not justify Airbus developing a NEO model without broader market support. And trust me, it would have needed to be a colossal amount of support, as by this point, the European plane maker was trying to head in different directions for the longevity of its business. In a similar sense, Boeing struggled to 
attract customers for the 7478 passenger variant, even though, unlike the A380neo, this was a wide body actually produced. This was all in an age where quad engine dominance was certainly coming to an end. But touching on that last point, what on earth do airlines want today if they're not opting for quad engine planes? Well, the rise of twin engine jets has redefined the wide body scene, and for all the right reasons, although maybe us aviation enthusiasts would argue differently, as we see more and more quad engine planes depart from our local airports. These aircraft offer the perfect balance. Range, efficiency, versatility, flexibility, you name it. It allows airlines to serve many different routes a varying distance in a profitable manner, rather than just one or two. Since conception, the 350 has received over 1,000 orders, just like the 787, which has been a significant success. These models enable airlines to operate direct point-to-point -point flights. The failure to launch the A380neo paired with the failure of the 7478 to really secure widespread adoption showed that a market for these planes was no longer present. But let's compare the order performance slash interest. The thing is, and I'll continue to say it, the A380neo never launched. Comparing the A380-800 to the 7478, however, regarding their adoption, certainly present two different outcomes and give us our best estimate to really understand how a Neo would have been adopted. And they both had their struggles. The A380-800, despite its iconic success, saw pretty limited adoption outside Emirates, with production ceasing in 2021, driven by the Dubai-based carrier. They saw delivery of over 100 units. They were truly supporting the program. And the thing is, had Emirates not committed to the A380, arguments could have been made that it would have selected the 7478. But suppose it hadn't. Well, the fate of the A380 would have been even more frowned upon, and probably from an adoption standpoint, would have seen it align better with the 7478. The poor figures across the board really do showcase the challenges of sustaining demand for ultra-large aircraft. If Airbus had proceeded with the A380neo, well, it would have likely been a similar fate. In fact, some would argue even worse. Remember, Emirates were the only customer that was even putting forward the proposition of an A380neo. There was no other backing. So, whereas the A380-800 at least had some more widespread adoption. The story of the prospective A380neo and the 7478 really highlight one thing, that being the changing industry, and how interest from one specific airline will not necessarily always nowadays justify an aircraft being produced if the plane maker can't see a widespread adoption and long-term success for it. And what I mean by that is a plane of the scale of an A380neo. We do see nowadays planes such as the A350-1000 ULR being purposefully built for Qantas. But the thing is, while we'll see adjustments, we're not looking at a completely redefined wing, a completely new engine, maybe even a clean sheet program, and billions in costs. Moreover, despite Boeing's and many attempts to launch new 747 variants, the 747 478 ended up being the last iteration, and it reached a point where arguably the series was just no longer desired. Airlines have moved away from these planes, and it's a really interesting comparison to make. The prospective new A380 that Emirates put forward and Boeing's failures with the 7478. What can you learn from that? And again, the underlying theme is that airlines wanted something different, and these planes were no longer necessary for most. Thanks for watching, take care, I'll see you in a couple of days, for your latest industry analysis. And we'll fly